Hello learners. Welcome to today's lesson. I am Kezia Wanjiko. We're going to continue with value added tax and today we're going to define key terms that are used in VAT. Now from our last lesson we looked at deregistration or cancellation of VAT certificate and the implications that it will have on the taxpayer. We said that cancellation can be originating from the taxpayer when he realizes that his 12 month taxable turnover has fallen uh, below the threshold turnover of 5 million or when he ceases or stops to supply taxable goods and services he then informs the commissioner in writing about that then after the commissioner has uh, certified that uh, that is the true case or scenario is going to deregister we also said that deregistration or cancellation can originate from the commissioner where the commissioner feels that the taxpayer is not complying with the provisions that are provided for in the VAT Act. And he said, once you are deregistered by the commissioner and he issues and he writes to you that effective whatever date you've been deregistered, at that particular point, you're going to have to do a stock take, indicate the value of taxable supplies that you have at hand, and it is going to be presumed or it is going to be deemed, assumed that all those goods have been sold prior to the cancellation date. So you've got to make a return in the normal way using your old registration number. And uh, for that, you'll have closed your books with the commissioner as far as that is concerned. Should the issue be that um, your threshold turnover failed to uh, materialize, then you get subjected to turnover tax, which we shall cover in uh, later lessons. Now for today, let's define key terms. Now the importance of this is that from time to time, we will be mentioning these terms. And even if you go through the VAT Act, chapter 476, you're going to find these terms. And they're going to help us when it comes to accounting for VAT. The first term that we shall look at is the word supply. So we'll look at meaning of supply. meaning of supply. Now, in normal day-to-day -day business terms, to supply means you're simply selling. So, if you are selling goods, you've sold, you've delivered. Or you have invoiced the goods you've sold in accounting terms. If it's services, you have provided the service. So, let's get to the act and see what the meaning of supply is. Um, now, the expression supply includes, one, the sale, supply, or delivery of taxable goods to another person. Two, the sale or provision of taxable goods or services by a registered person for his own use outside the business. Now, that second definition, when you're providing goods or services to yourself outside the business, is what in accounting would be called drawings. So you're saying, every time you make drawings of taxable goods, it is deemed that you have supplied to yourself, you have sold to yourself, which is consistent with business. Because remember, once you start a business, the business has its own, it becomes an own entity, such that the owner of the business and the business have separate entities. That is the separate entity concept. So going by that, therefore, when you take goods, drawings, from the business, we deem that you have supplied to yourself and it's like you have just sold to yourself at the prevailing market price for those particular products. Then the third one, appropriation of taxable goods or services by a registered person for his own use outside the business. So you're not just dealing with the goods. We are dealing with services. For example, you're an architect and then you design your own house. You see, if you were designing for someone else, you would be making a taxable supply and we would uh, say that now you're collecting VAT. Uh, but now you're designing your own house. So you're providing to yourself a taxable service. So again, we deem that you have supplied or you have sold to yourself and you charge 
VAT. Then the fourth one, making of a gift of any taxable goods or taxable services. This is where for such things like donations. So for example, let's say you are, uh, you are in the service sector. So let's take the, uh, the architect again. So instead of, now this time the architect is not designing his own house, but he's designing for his friend. So that is their contribution towards the friend owning a house or something. So for that reason, we assume that that person you're donating to or the one you're giving that gift to, you have sold to them and therefore you cater for, for VAT. So all donations for all taxable services or taxable goods shall be taxed as if they were sold. Then uh, the fifth one, letting of taxable goods on hire, leasing or other transfers. Six, provision of taxable services by a contractor to himself in constructing a building and related civil engineering works for his own use or for sale or for renting to other people. So we have mentioned that. So he's saying when you make a supply, we are going to charge VAT. So that is what the expression supply means. That you have either sold sell or you have made gifts of taxable goods or you have made drawings of taxable goods or you have donated taxable goods or you have provided taxable services to yourself. Anytime this happens, you have made a supply for VAT purposes, we qualify to charge VAT. We shall call that later output VAT. Uh, the other key term that we are going to look at is uh, tax point. So the second term here is tax point. Or simply, when does VAT become due and payable. Now, in our previous lesson, we said that VAT is paid every other month. That means if, for example, you are considering the period, the tax period, January, then for all the sales that you've made in January and all the purchases you've made in January, you shall account for that VAT at the end of January and make sure that you pay that VAT over to the commissioner by the 20th of February, uh, whatever year it is. So every other, the tax period here is every other month, Jan, Feb, up to December. And the payment date is 20th of the consecutive month. So Jan, Feb, if it is November, December, if it is June, July. So now, under this tax point, we are asking, now that you're paying VAT every other month, or we are accounting for it every other month, at what point does VAT become due and payable? In full recognition that we are selling on continuous basis. Every other day when you open business, we are buying and we are selling. So in the light of that, tax becomes due and payable at the earliest of three circumstances. So the first thing is it will be payable at the earliest of one delivery, two invoice, three payment, whether in part or whether it's paid in full. Four, an architect's certificate. That would be in respect of construction contracts. So let's look at those four circumstances. So remember, in the month that any of this happens, you're going to account for VAT. So if, let's take an example again, January. So if whatever happens, whatever comes first out of these four is when you're going to account for 
VAT. So delivery, this one, you will have a delivery note as proof of delivery. So you're not looking at the terms. It's only that you sold or you delivered goods to a customer or goods were delivered to you. Remember we said you, it's got to be a business, not individuals. Then the other one is invoice. So the invoice has a date. But remember, you're allowed to write an invoice even 14 days, up to 14 days. Uh, from the date of the transaction. So from day zero or day one of the transaction up to 14 days, you have that window to do the invoice. So whatever date you are going to have, then payment part in full. Now this applies where uh, the terms of trade are, for example, cash with order. So you've already informed the customers, we need to process your order fine. But for us to be able to do that, you need to do a down, a down payment or a deposit. So when that deposit is done, you've already received part payment for that particular transaction. Account for it in the month that you received the, the part payment or full payment, depending on whatever you have agreed with the customer. Then architect certificate, if it is a construction contract that's taking, let's say, three, four years or more than one accounting period, you find that the value of work certified must be done by a professional. So once that work has been certified, the professional is going to issue a document proving that the work has already been done. So that is what you're calling an architect's certificate. It could be a surveyor, it could be a supervisor, so long as it is someone who's authorized to determine the value of work done. And the basis of which, of course, now the contractor will receive the money. So you're saying again that you compare the date of delivery and the date of invoice and the date when you received part or full payment and the date that uh, appears on the architect certificate. Whichever comes first, that is when or the period, the tax period, that that transaction will be accounted for for uh, VAT purposes. The other thing, the other term that we shall look at is uh, the value of supply. Value of supply. Now, we're going to revisit something that uh, was covered in uh, previous lessons and uh, classification of taxes. Now, you said that in classification of taxes, tax can be uh, classified based on one, the tax base, two, administration arrangements, and then uh, three, there was tax rate. So then it was mentioned that a tax base refers to the legal description of the item uh, with which VAT, in this case, because we're dealing with VAT, VAT applies. So when you deal with the value of supply, we are trying to answer the question on what are we charging VAT? We already said VAT is a tax. It is a proportion of your wealth that you have to give up to the, uh, to the state willingly. So on what do you charge VAT? What is the value? Meaning that this value must be quantified in monetary terms. Now, if we flash back a bit to what you covered in law. In law you said that every time a transaction occurs, uh, there is either that transaction being done at arm's length or it is not at arm's length. So what you described as arm's length or an independent, between independent parties, you said the parties engaging in the transaction are independent of each other and as a result, the market, the prevailing market price is what is being charged in that transaction. That was a transaction that is at arm's length. Then there was a transaction that was not at arm's length where, for example, you have related parties. So because of the relationship, the special relationship that the parties may have, maybe a subsidiary and a holding company or maybe between family members, something like that. Because of that special relationship, the market price tends to be compromised. So you find that in most of the cases, the, the amount that is charged for that transaction may be lower than the market price. So the same uh, we're going to apply here, that we're going to look at what are the terms of that transaction? Is it at arm's length or is it not at arm's length? Are the parties independent of each other or are they related um, as, a, as a result of some special 
relationship. So in that case, in case of independent parties, or if the parties in a transaction are independent of each other, independent parties, the value of the supply is going to be value of supply is the price charged. If the parties are related, related parties, and you said in related party transactions, most likely there's going to be a, a compromise on the market price. We're going to uh, apply value of supply. Supply is the prevailing, prevailing market price. <laughs>